Thank you. 
sing it together tonight. All right, here we go.
singing by everybody tonight. There's not, think about this. Can you imagine the day when we all get to be before Jesus? And it says 10,000 times 10,000. And we'll all be crying out, singing probably a song like Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound of all of our voices. Tonight it sounded great just in this room. Imagine what's going to be like in heaven where we're singing praises <coughs> to for all eternity. What a day that's going to be. And tonight I'm excited. It's always good to be here. And uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm the director. It's good to see you here. And if you've never been to our mission before, we're glad that you're here tonight. And uh, I always, I love being able to be here Tuesday nights to be able to do the service. And I don't, I can never get enough of preaching the Word of God. It's an awesome privilege that God allows us to be able to take His Word and to preach it and teach it. And our mission is here to be a blessing and to be a help and to get the gospel of Jesus Christ to a hopeless area. And He is the hope that we need. Amen. And tonight when we're done with the service, my preaching will probably last about 20, 25 minutes tonight. There will be dinner after this. And then we also have the baptistry ready tonight. If there's anybody Amen. wanting to follow the Lord and believers' baptism, we have it ready. It's outside, ready to go tonight. It wasn't here, but it started leaking all over the floor. So we moved it outside. So if there's someone interested in following the Lord, and so what is baptism? Baptism does not save you. The Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Amen. So I take my wedding ring off, I'm still married. But not everyone knows it. I wear the wedding ring. What happens? Everyone knows I'm married. Or I like to wear rings. One or the other. But it shows that I'm married. What baptism does, it shows the fact that you've trusted Jesus Christ. You think, how does baptism work? You're in water. You're buried with him in baptism. You're raised to walk in the newness of life. Baptism is simply a picture of what the Lord did, and it's just you following the Lord as the first step in obedience to Him. Romans chapter 8 is where we'll be in the message tonight. Romans chapter number 8, one of my favorite passages in all about. If you were saying, what is your favorite chapter in the Bible? There are a lot of verses that I love, but if you were asking my favorite chapter, Romans 8 wins. It is my favorite chapter in the Bible. And today in our program class, when I taught that earlier today, we looked at the eternal security. Knowing for sure that we're saved. Amen. Do you know Satan wants you to doubt the Lord? Do you realize someone who doubts our salvation is really of no use to doing any good for the Lord, right? You're always worried if I do this or if I do that, am I going to lose my salvation? And God wants you to be secure in the fact that he saved you. Once he saves you, no one can change that. And we can, if we can look at several passages throughout the Bible. Jesus said, those that the Father gives to me, I will in no wise cast out. The Father is the one who draws our hearts. And when you come to Jesus, he doesn't cast you out. John talks about the fact that no man can pluck you out of the hand of the Father. Once you're a child of God, there is nothing you can do to lose that salvation. But as we talk about this, and my message tonight is for those who are saved, not to doubt their salvation. But I would, it wouldn't be a good for me preaching the word of God if I didn't take a minute for those who might not be saved here. This message is for the saved that are here, but it's also for those that aren't saved. Say, well, what is salvation? There are lots of people that give lots of definitions of what salvation is. Earlier today, before I got here, um, a lady that used to go to our church told me her uncle's passing away, and he's in a convalescent home in Pasadena. So before I came here today, I went to Pasadena to go see this man. She said she was unsure if he knew the Lord or not. When I got in there, he can't move his legs. He's, he doesn't have many days left. His bed is like this high off the ground. I knelt down next to him there at the bed. He, we talked for a few minutes. He knew who his, who his, uh, who his niece was. And we talked about these things. And he grew up Catholic. And in Catholicism, there's a different idea of what salvation truly is than what the Word of God says. Now, I don't care if you're Christian, 
if you're a Buddhist, or whatever you are. For me, as a child of God, this book is my final authority. So what it says, I follow. So I don't care what some priest or pastor tells me, I care what the book says. And the Bible makes it very clear that salvation is only through Jesus Christ. Amen. The problem is, we all enter into this world sinners. Amen. Do you know, for my children, I've never had to teach them how to do bad things. It's natural. Those of you that have kids and things, if you ever sit them down and say, all right, I'm going to teach you how to disobey today. You don't have to teach people how to disobey. We know how to do it. We know how to not listen because we're sinners. There's none righteous, no, not one. We all fall short of the glory of God. The Bible is clear about that. And the Bible says, since we fall short of God's glory, there is nothing that you and I can do to reach to the Lord. My righteousness, the Bible says, is like a filthy rat. The very best I have to offer the Lord is a filthy rat. So the Bible says, by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. You see, I cannot work my way to heaven. There are many people, well, if I do this, or if I do this, or if I get baptized, or if I do this, that's a work. Jesus finished the work when he died on the cross. The Bible says, sin, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And you see, Jesus loved us so much in that while we were yet sinners, he gave his life for us, the Bible says. And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So the Bible says, what is salvation? Salvation is believing that Jesus is who the Bible says he is. Believing that Jesus is the Son of God that came and lived a sinless life. He died on a cross. He rose again. He took my punishment. And I believe in him. That's salvation. You confess it with your mouth. You believe it in your heart. That's Bible salvation. If you're here tonight and you don't have that settled, I'll talk to you at the end of the message tonight. If you're sitting here tonight and you've received Christ as your Savior, ever have those days where you're like, I just don't know? Do you ever get that feeling like, I don't know that I feel saved? Do you know you can't let your feelings lead you? Just the other night, I was saying earlier today, Sunday night, I didn't, it was Saturday night, I didn't have a good feeling about something. I felt like something bad was going to happen. And guess what? Nothing bad happened. Because my feelings aren't always correct. But the Bible tells us, and I want you to look at these verses with me. Romans chapter 8, and look at verse 31 to the end of the chapter. We'll get a few thoughts from these verses tonight, these blessed verses. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Who is he that judges? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And Paul says, nay, or no. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Not just a conqueror. We are more than conquerors for him that loved us. And Paul says, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature. In other words, there's nothing Amen. Come on. shall be able to separate us 
from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. See, as we look at these verses tonight, I want to talk about being secure and safe in your salvation tonight. As we look, number one, we see that we are secure by the labor of Christ. All that he's done for us. Look back at verse 33. It says there, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. You see, as we look at these verses, who also make an intercession for us. As we look at these thoughts, and even going back up to verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? You know, in our vernacular, we use that word if, like, well, what if this happens? That Bible word if right there means since you're saved, since this has happened, look at it again. And put that thing that word since. What shall we then say to these things? Since God be for us, who can be against us? God literally cared about you enough that verse 32, he spared not his own son. God literally gave his very best in his son and delivered him up for us all. That's how much God cares tonight. When we look at it and we think about it, all that the Lord did for us. And we think about the fact because God loved sinners so much, he gave his son to die on the cross. Amen. Jesus literally on the cross became my sin and your sin. He, knew, he who knew no sin became sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. He was judged in my place. He made the ultimate sacrifice out of his love for us. The Bible says, greater love hath no man than this. And that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Romans 5 8 tells us, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, tonight, I, my salvation settled not because I'm a good person, not because I've done this or because I've done this. I'm secure tonight because of what Christ did for me and the labor that he put into it. Thank God for that. We see those verses, verse 33 says, Who can lay anything at us? Who's going to judge you? There's one who's going to judge, right? His name's God. And he's the one who sent his son to die on the cross for us and to save us. And guess what? It's God that justifies. It's God that will condemn. It'll be God that judges. But when you're a child of his, you are secured tonight by what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Not only are you secured by the labor of Christ, but you're secured by his life. We look at verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? Who's he that judgeth? It's Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. You know why I'm secure tonight in my salvation? Because guess what? My Savior died on the cross for me. When he cried out, it is finished, he paid the price. Sin was defeated. Death was defeated. It was all done. You know what Satan thought that day? He thought Jesus was saying, I'm finished. No. He was saying, it's finished. I completed the price. What all those animal sacrifices, year after year after year after year, could never take away the blood of Jesus Christ, washed it all away, and cleansed me from my sin. And I've secured tonight by the fact he paid the price on the cross. But I'm also secured tonight by the power that rose him from the dead. You think about this, we serve a, li a living Savior today. He's risen again. That's what Easter was all about. Go show me any major religion out there and show me where their Savior lives. I can show you where they died. I can show you their tomb. Show me their Savior that lives. How about this with all these different Saviors in the world? You're supposed to give your life for them, right? You know what my Savior did? He gave his life for me. That's what makes Jesus different than any other God, so-called God that anyone would follow. He gave up everything so that I could have life. And you see, tonight I'm secure in my salvation because of the price he paid and the power that rose him from the dead. Because the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is the same power that yeah. lives inside of you and I tonight. It's that same power that can change your life and make you that new creature. And old things are passed away and all things are become new. Thank God for it tonight. 
by the power and display of the tomb. And then you know why else I'm secure tonight in my salvation? Because he's not here anymore. He's up at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us tonight. And there are times that I pray, times that I'm not sure what I'm praying for, whatever the case may be. But he knows, and he's interceding at the right hand of the Father tonight. I've secured my salvation. Not only because of his labor for me, but also his life. But lastly tonight, I'm secure by the love of Jesus. You know, there are a lot of people that say that they love people, right? You maybe have experienced it in your life. Someone so says, I, I love you. And then you get them mad. Do they still love you? <coughs> I think it was my seven-year-old the other day. It was one of my children the other day. I hate them. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Just calm down. Calm down. Those are strong words to say. Hey, we're secure tonight by the love of Christ. Do you know these verses make it clear when you're a child of God, there's nothing you can do to get God to stop loving you? Say, so, oh, pastor, you don't understand what I've done. You don't understand the circumstances. No, you don't understand who your God is. Because this is what we do. We get stuck looking at ourselves, and that's the problem. We look at ourselves. That's where the problem begins. You see, I know that you're a great sinner tonight. I know I'm a great sinner tonight. But I also know the love that God has for his children is greater than any sin could ever be. You see, no matter what, his love is enduring. Regardless of what we face. Look what those verses say. In verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of God? You see that word separate, it means to divorce or to divide asunder. Who's going to separate? Who's going to separate you from God? What circumstance in life? You say, well, pastor, I've had a lot of rough times in life. Read about these rough times. Is tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? You see, there's nothing you can go through that can separate you from his love. You say, but you don't, you don't understand where I've been or what's happened. He loves you, and he promises to go with you wherever you go. Didn't we talk about that last Tuesday night? You can remember back to then. I will be with you when you go through the waters. I'm right there. The fire, all that, I'm right there with you. The Bible tells us to be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, and I'll never forsake thee. The Bible says in Matthew 28, 20, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. No matter what happens, you say, I, my family's abandoned me. I'm here on the streets of L.A., and I don't know what to do. Hey, your God hasn't abandoned you. Right. Your Heavenly Father's still right there. He still loves you. As you walk up and down these streets, and you wonder what's going on, and who cares about you. you got a Savior who loves you tonight. A Savior who cares about you. And whatever you're going through, it doesn't matter if you're hungry tonight. It doesn't matter if you're poor tonight. It doesn't matter what circumstances are. If you've been persecuted, rejected, he loves you tonight. And his love endures through it all. And you know what his love does? Not only is it there through all the tough times, it helps us and it enables us to move forward. Look at verse number 37 there. Nay, no, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Yes. Paul says, not only are we conquerors, we are more than conquerors. That word literally means a super conqueror. Think about that for a minute. When you face the battles of life, and as these things try to take you down, and the Satan has a foothold, and he's trying to just mess you up and tear you down and tear you down, you got to remember the fact that God loves you, and through Jesus Christ, you can conquer. You can get through it. You say, you don't understand how my drug addiction is tonight. You don't understand how powerful your God is tonight. You say, you don't understand that alcohol, I just have to have that alcohol. You don't understand there's someone stronger than a bottle. His name's Jesus, and he can help you tonight, and he'll be more than a conqueror. Not just a conqueror, more than a conqueror. What a blessing that is. You see, hard times are going to come as a Christian. But with Jesus, you can make it right on through. And why am I secure by his love tonight? Because it's everlasting. Going back to what, Jesus, what the, God said to Israel in the Old Testament, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Mm -hmm. 
God loves you tonight. And he loves you so much. There are many people that say, well, hey, if you do this or you do that, God's not going to love you anymore. That's not what the Bible says. I'm not telling you to go out and do this and that. There are those out there that say, you know, Catholicism, you kill yourself, you can't go to heaven. Suicide. What's the first thing listed there in verse 38? I'm persuaded that neither death nor life. There's nothing that can separate you from God's love. There's no drug. There's no demon. There's no Satan. There's no man. There's no <coughs> nothing that can separate you from God's love. See, the problem is we view God's love through the lens of how people love us. Mm -hmm. But you need to look to the cross and see it's a little different that way. You see, I love those verses Paul says as he closed out this chapter, chapter number 8. He says, literally, God's done everything, and I am safe and secure, and I know for a fact that I'm safe, and nothing should ever let me doubt it. See, the fact is, the fact that Jesus labored and he died on the cross, how is God not going to take care of me and take care of everything else? If he can raise Jesus from the dead, I think he can keep you saved forever. Mm -hmm. I really think he can. So, well, you don't know about my sin. You don't realize how big your Savior is tonight. Mm -hmm. He's big enough. I'm secure by his labor. I'm secure by his life. He died. He rose again. And he's up in heaven waiting to come again. And someday soon, I don't know when, but someday soon, Jesus is coming again. And before he left his disciples, he reminded them, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Because in my Father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, because I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, and since I'm going to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Does Jesus lie? No, when he says something, he means it. There's two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. So we can have a strong consolation and a hope and know that since he cannot lie, he says, since I'm going to prepare a place for you, I'm coming again. He's coming. It may be morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, but it's going to be very soon. Man, I'm secure tonight in my salvation because of his labor, because of his life. I'm secure tonight because of his love. No one's ever loved you like Jesus does. That's why we can sing that kid's song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. When I was in Bible college, I did a lot of nursing home services. And we went to a few of the, um, few of the um, I don't know what you would call it, the sections, the dementia sections. Where some of these people couldn't even say their own name. Who are you? They stare at you. Who are you? What's your name? I don't know. But you know something that most of them could still do? Sing Jesus loves me. Because uh, the truth that doesn't escape you. One of my favorite parables in all the Bible is the parable, the parable of the prodigal son. That father loved his son so much. His son, his son basically said, Dad, you're better off dead than me. Give me my substance. And the son went out and wasted it all on everything. And the passage says that the son, he came to himself, he repented, and he realized the fact, even my dad's servants have it better than me living in the pig pen where I'm living right now. And what did he do? He went home. He didn't even have to go knock on the door. He didn't even have to cross into the yard. You know who was watching? His dad was. And when his dad saw him, what did he do? He went out. Dad, I'm no longer a... Da, da, da. Stop. Go get the best robe. Put a ring on his finger. My son's home. Let's throw a party. <clears throat> Father there is a great representation of who Jesus is and who God is. He loves you tonight. And there's nothing you can do to get God to stop loving you. But with all that being said tonight, 
If you don't accept the love of God, God's love does you no, no good. Because God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That means God loves everyone. Amen. But if you die without Christ, you have God's love or you have God's wrath. The wrath of God abides on us. So don't let the love of Christ mean nothing in your life. Come to him. And when you come to him, as Jesus said, I'm not going to cast you out. I'm going to welcome you in. And guess what? You know, the Lord knows you and I better than anyone knows us. And he still loves us. And he still wants to be our father. Hey, Christian, quit living in insecurity tonight. We can go all around us and in our world tonight. You know what people are looking for? Security and acceptance. So the two things everybody's looking for. Um, few, first few years of our church there in Chino, we used to go into the Chino men's prison. And I would have a service in there in the dorm area with the newbies that would come in. You know, you can ask around there. And 90 to 95% of those men that were going to spend years there, you know, most of them did not have a father in their life. A dad helps bring security. The most secure people in reality are those that had a good dad. You say, well, my, my earthly dad, he was a piece of work. You have a heavenly father. Amen. And you can be secure in him tonight. He will never leave you. He'll never, you say, well, my, my earthly dad, he abandoned me. Your heavenly father will never abandon you. He'll go with you wherever you go. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And there's not. So when my dad left and he stopped loving me and my mom and my family, your Heavenly Father will never stop loving you. He loves you. If you're here tonight and you're a Christian, be encouraged by the fact you can't lose it. If you're here and you've never received the gift of salvation, what are you waiting for? Now I can stand up here and say I got a million dollars to the first person who came up here and got it. A million dollars, you might think it would last for a while. I'd love to see you all run up to get that. I can see some of you even with, you would run up here. You know what's more valuable than a million dollars tonight? Jesus Christ. Jesus. And if you don't have him tonight, I encourage you to get to know my Jesus. He's the best thing that will ever happen to you. He's so awesome. He's changed my life. He wants to change your life too. And I'm so glad that when I'm a bad Christian, he still loves me. When I'm a good Christian, he loves me. And he never stops. Father, thank you for your word tonight. And thank you for the truths of your word. And thank you for the hope of salvation. And Lord, we thank you for the many blessings. And we thank you for your work in our lives. And Lord, I pray tonight that if there's someone here not saved, that they would come to a saving knowledge of you tonight. I also pray that if there's someone here who wants to show the Lord their love to him and wants to get baptized tonight, that you'd also open up that door as well. Amen. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm just looking, no one else looking around. I'm going to ask two questions tonight. Maybe three, it just depends. First question is this. Are you saved? Are you a child of God? I wonder if there's someone here who can say, hey, Pastor Brian, I'm not sure if I'm saved. I'm not going to embarrass you and call you out. I'm not going to do anything. I want to pray for you. And I'd love to be able, before you leave here tonight, before you get food or before you leave here tonight, to make sure you know that you're saved. Yeah. There's someone here to say, hey, Pastor, I want to know the love of Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to know him. Pray for me. Will you just raise your hand anybody tonight? Be honest, anybody tonight? Is there anyone here who would say, Pastor, sometimes I doubt my salvation. But the message helped me. Pray for me that I'd stop doubting my salvation. Would you raise your hand? I see that hand. As I mentioned a minute ago, we have the baptistry ready tonight for baptisms. 
you've gotten saved and trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, the first step of obedience is following him in baptism. Is there anybody interested in baptism tonight? Say, what are we going to do with clothes and all that? I don't have a clue. We'll figure that out in the next few minutes. Is there anyone here that would say, I'm interested in getting baptized tonight and following the Lord? I got one hand here. Anybody else tonight? Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else say, I want to get baptized tonight? Anybody else? All right. Father, thank you for the time we've had in your word this evening, and thank you for your goodness and your love for us. Bless each of these men and ladies that are here tonight and help them to grow in their love and their knowledge of you. You're an awesome, amazing, wonderful God. And what everyone needs tonight, they need to know the awesome, amazing, wonderful God that you are. Bless those here tonight. And everyone raise, no one raise their hand about needing to be saved. <coughs> Lord, I pray that everyone here is saved and knows you. And if they're not, that you would convict them until they come to a saving knowledge of who you are. Mm -hmm. Bless the food and bless all that goes on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.